Next we have someone who was also not just a physician, but a scientist, a novelist and also a spokesman. James McCune Smith was born in New York City on April the 18th, 1813. Smith was educated at the African Free School in New York City. The free school offered a liberal arts education designed to demonstrate African American intellects and Smith was identified early in his life as being intellectually gifted. An interesting side note, some of the other important figures that attended the school were Minister and Educator Henry Highland Garnett and Minister and African Nationalist Alexander Cromwell. After completing his studies, James applied for various American universities but he was refused admission on account of his race. By now, this should not be a surprise. He would have to look outside of the United States, across the seas, to the University of Glasgow in Scotland, who offered him a place in 1832. He would go on to earn a master's and a medical degree and would later return to the United States. He would return with a new outlook and a belief that things could be different. After all, he was the first university trained African American physician in the United States. He opened a pharmacy on West Broadway and ran a racially integrated medical practice, the first in the United States. Further to this, he was served for nearly 20 years as a chief physician for the Colored Orphan Asylum, which housed on average 400 children annually. The asylum was founded in 1836, and after the free school, this was the most important stature of an institution for African Americans in New York City. In addition to caring for orphans, the home sometimes boarded children temporarily when their parents were unable to support them, as there were not many jobs for free blacks in New York. One of the leading causes of death from infectious disease in those times was smallpox, and James being eager to protect young children would regularly give vaccination for smallpox at the asylum. James would gain alliances with Harvard-educated statistician Edward Jarvis. The two pioneered the use of medical-based statistics to disprove the notion of African-American inferiority, and he exposed scientific flaws in the racially biased the U.S. Census of 1840. His work challenged racial views about the abilities of African-Americans to transition into free society. He authored the first medical scientific paper published by an African-American physician in America. He grew a love for writing and wrote further books about science, literature, geography and, and his experiences encouraged him to write about the people and world around him, including a series of literary portrayals of working class African-Americans in New York. When the Civil War broke out, Smith saw, as did his other colleagues, many opportunities for African-American to enact this for philosophy. Along with notables such as Frederick Douglass and Martin Dangley, he lobbied relentlessly for a chance for African Americans to demonstrate their loyalty to liberty and their capacity for civic participation through military services. He believed that slavery would truly die not merely through the war alone, but through a thorough and equitable redistribution of southern wealth into the hands of the four million freed people who had faced years of hard labour. Frederick Douglass, the American social reformer, who we had mentioned earlier, went on to say this about James. Educated in Scotland and breathing the free air of that country, Smith came back to his native land with ideas of liberty which placed him in advance of most of his citizens of African descent. Smith believed he was living proof of how things could be different. His education and learning could demonstrate that he was equal to any man, regardless of race. It was a belief that he championed for the rest of his life. Establishing his name during those times as a spokesman on behalf of free blacks, he widely influenced the African American movements to abolish slavery and create equality for free people of African descent. He went on to become one of the most important yet historically neglected figures in antebellum African-American history.